Hey kids, welcome back. This is module four, lesson six. Really fun, practical, meaningful, and important lesson uh, where the objective is to relate fractions as division to fraction of a set. So our previous couple of lessons have been relating fractions as division, understanding that a fraction is a division problem that can be solved. And so now we're gonna kind of look at uh, what a set is. It's just a group of things or numbers. And then we're gonna take it apart so that we can look at what a fraction of a number is. In the previous programs that I've taught, we would always call it fraction of a number. Oh, this is the fraction of a number uh, activity, lesson, whatever. And it's, it's so practical and sensible. Let's take a look at what some of these examples are, and I'll show you how this ties in with tape diagrams. So a set is simply a group, okay? So if I have 32 in the set, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, these number bonds. You probably remember that from fourth grade. It's just like, what numbers can you multiply to get the total? So if 32 can be made up of a number of different factors, but uh, we're going to look at the denominator as being a really important part of how to choose the right number for your number bond and to help you make your array. This little thing here is called an array. It's just taking your set and showing it as a uh, unit so that you can kind of make a picture of it. So um, all this really important so that we can talk about finding one piece of a set. And then if you know one piece of a set, you can know all the pieces of a set. So let's check out what we have here. One third of six. Six would be the set. That's everything all together. Now, how do I know how many groups to make? Well, you're gonna want three groups. So how do you know how to make the three groups? Well, six divided by three, that's the denominator, would be two in a set. And so these numbers are gonna be really tightly connected to help you figure out how to draw your array. Now. Once you look at this, you see one third of six, and then I know that two uh, would be the answer to that. So instead of doing a lot of, um, well, we're gonna draw the pictures and we're gonna, we're gonna make this set, we're gonna learn how to multiply with fractions a wee bit here. And so in multiplying, something else you should know that's kind of brand new is that when we multiply with fractions, we multiply the top numbers and we multiply the bottom numbers. Unlike adding and subtracting where you never, never add and subtract the bottom, now you have to open your mind and be flexible with your thinking because in multiplying you do. Now let's check out if one third of six is two. Okay, it's basically saying if I have six, it can be put into three groups, there would be two in each group, okay? So then how many would two thirds of six be? Well, two, out of three groups of six would have four in it. So the, the practical part of this is that you can really see how many you're making. Three thirds of six would give you all six. Let's look at some more uh, for a couple of other examples. One fourth of 12, I'm taking 12, putting it into four groups, four groups of three. One of those has three, but then you can find out two fourths of 12 and three fourths of 12 simply by repeatedly adding this number, okay? One third of nine, that's three. Here's another sample. Uh, one sixth of 12, that would be two. And so you're, you're gonna see really soon that we're looking when we have all these ones, we're basically setting up what's gonna be a fraction as division problem to get you the answer. This is where we're going, but today it's just about making the pictures. Now, let me also show you how you're gonna be able to use this with tape diagrams. Very, very important to understand, again, the part to whole relationship with tape diagrams. Here is a whole, okay? So if you said half of 10, how much is half of 10? It's gonna be five because it's putting 10 into two groups with five in each group. So the tape diagrams are gonna come in really handy when we start fractioning out these holes, okay? What's one fourth of 12? Well, it's three. What's one fifth of 25? Well, it's five. So we're gonna take these expressions. This is where we're going with that, but back to today's work, just making a picture with those little pieces 
and um, and the final bonus okay again back to today half of 10 we're going to take our whole the 10 divide it by that bottom number this is going to be your answer why are we doing this i'll tell you why because at some point you're going to need to know the fraction of a really big number that you're not going to be able to see so you're going to want to take what you understand about this visual model and then mathematically calculate because you know how to split this and divide it and share it and then when you know one piece you can know any if i want one sixth of three thousand four hundred fifty two Okay, then I divide this number by the denominator, so dividing by 16. And then let's say you need to know 4 sixteenths. Did I say 6? 1 sixteenth of 3,452. But then if you know one piece, you would just multiply by 4 to know 4 sixteenths of 3,452. So you just take what the answer is and multiply by 4. That's a lot of information I know, okay? But... Again, today we are making pictures. Now that we get back into the book, it's going to look a whole lot easier as you get started with today's lesson. So today it's lesson six, problem set, making pictures of a fraction of a number. It's on page 157 in my book. I hope you can find yours too. All right. Find the value of each of the following. Let's take a look at these easy problems. This is a set of nine. Of is going to be a key term in setting up problems in the future. It's going to mean multiply. Of is multiplying. Okay, of means multiply. So we're really going to, in the future, have one third times nine over one. That's going to get you, remember when I said multiply across, 1 times 9 is 9, 3 times 1 is 3, and now we have the problems from the previous lessons, 9 divided by 3. Now I know the answer, so how can I show it with my picture? I'm showing that 1 out of 3 sets with 9 as the total would be 3, 3 units or 3 items. Okay, but if I have two thirds of nine, it means I have two out of the three sets of nine. How many did we shade? Now it's six. And again, three times two is six. If you know one is three, then you can know that two is six. And how about three? Three times three, well, that's nine. So when you find out one, you can find out any. Let's check out B. So if I have 15 as my whole set, you might recognize that this is 5, then 10, then 15. 15 is the set. One set of three sets would be how many? Well, you just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Today, it's just our picture that we're using to understand how this goes together. One third of 15 this whole number can be put over 1 because 15 divided by 1 is 15. Mathematically, this works. Multiplying across, I can see that 15, 1 times 15 is 15, 3 times 1 is 3, 15 is now being divided by 3 for 5. That will give you the 1. Now what we're doing today is looking at the pictures. This is the math that can show you how to work this problem. So how many would be in two sets? Well, you're going to take how many in one set times two. It's ten. How about how many in one set times three? That's all of the triangles. It's the full set. Okay? So I hope you like it. I hope you're excited about this. Actually, I hope you click subscribe. <laughs> See how I threw that in there? Pretty subtle. Just kidding. Um, no, really, click subscribe and come back again. I will try to help you with some math videos. But anyway, back to the sets. If I have 20 for the next set, and now we're kind of looking at, ooh, they're changing what they're doing. They're giving us a different scaffold. If I have one-fifth of 20, it means 20 is in five sets. Set one, set two, set three, set four, set five. So again, thinking about those number bonds, if 20 is made up of five and something else, you're just trying to find that other number, okay, for the one set. But you can see it right here. It's four. One-fifth of 20 is four. 
You're taking 20, putting it into five groups. How many are in each group? It's like a fancy switched up division. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. Okay, you can think of it that way too. 4 fifths of 5. If I know that 4 are in 1, multiply that by the numerator to get 16. 4 groups would be 16 because it's 4, 8, 12, 16. So then how many out of fifths of 20 would equal 20? The only time you can get the whole is if you have all the pieces. So it has to be the fraction over itself in order to get the whole thing. Remember, that means one. This is the whole set. So 5 fifths of 20 equal 20. Okay? So I hope you don't have any questions. Anybody raise your hand if you have questions? Oh, sorry, that's just mean. Okay, anyway, in this set we have 24. So everybody uh, has 24. We have eight groups. It's essentially 24 divided by eight. You can see that there are three in each group. One set has three. Now that you know one set has the three, you can know any. That means we can know three, we can know four, six, and seven. You're just multiplying by the numerator. So three times three, nine. Three times four, 12. 3 times 6, 18. 3 times 7, 21. And that's all there is for that one. So basically, find out what one of that fraction is so you can find out everything. Let's do this one. Okay, find 4 sevenths of 14. We're going to draw the set kind of like we were, but you don't have to do triangles if you don't want to. And then you're going to shade to show your thinking like we did in the beginning. Uh, so how many are in the total set? It's going to be 14. How do I know how to draw that? Again, take your 14, put it in a number bond. If 7 is one of the factors, because the denominator tells me, what do I multiply it by to get the 14? And you would say by 2. So I'm going to have two rows of 7. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But I have 7 in a set. Okay, so I have all 14, but I need seven sets. So instead of having two rows, that would be two sets. Notice that I'm going to divide them this way or break them up that way so that I have seven sets. Okay, seven sets that make a total of 14. Now, how many are in one set? Two in one set. I can see it. Okay, We're shading to show our thinking. So how many are in four sets? If this is one set, two, three, four. So it's going to be two per set times the numerator to get eight. So how many? We're showing with shading and we're also connecting to the written method, which this is basically where you're going to go eventually when you stop making all the dots and squares and triangles, okay? Well, let's do another one. And if you want to circle your answer, draw a set and shade to show your thinking. Eight uh, are in four-sevenths of 14. I hope that makes it more clear for you. Okay, how does knowing one-eighth of 24 help you to find three-eighths of 24? So draw a picture to explain your thinking. Again, taking the 24... And having that as our number bond, 8 is one of the factors. 8 times what is 24? That's right. So I know I need to make a lot of circles. I'm going to make, uh, I'll just do three rows of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 3. 24. You can count by ones and make sure you have them all done. Oh, wow, I'm just making that worse, aren't I? Uh, you can count by ones and make sure you have it all done, but you should have 24 by the time you're done. The thing that we're doing here as we make our sets, notice up here and down here, if you have these three rows, but I need eight sets, the way you're going to split it properly is to make eight sets. You have to have eight sets. Okay, so don't make three rows. That will not help you find the eighths. Okay, 
Now, if this is 1 eighth, okay, how does knowing 1 eighth of 24, this is the 1 eighth of 24, and how many does that equal? It equals 3. So how does knowing this help you to find 3 eighths of 24? Okay, I can take 3 and multiply by 3 of 3 eighths. Okay, so it's basically you're taking the numerator to get my answer. And then let's show 3 times 3 equals 9. And then let's show here. This is 2 eighths. This is 3 eighths. And how many are shaded? 9. Okay? So just, it, it should be really concrete. And as we get away from the models, it becomes very just math stuff multiplying. And it's really very, very easy and fun. I hope you guys are all successful with it. Okay, number four, there are 32 students in the, a class. Of the class, three-eighths of the students bring their own lunches. How many students bring their lunches? So it's going to be three-eighths of the 32. So 32, number bond. We need eight to be one of the factors. Eight times what is 32? Let's make four rows of eight. It's a lot. Give me a minute. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. But we have eight sets. Draw this. Now that we have everything divided up into our eight sets, three eighths of the students bring their own lunches. How many students bring their own lunches? Three eighths. Three sets out of eight. So how many is that? Okay, so if four are in one set, it's four times three, and you get 12. You can also count, and you can show your shading, which you should do. Um, mathematically, it would be the three-eighths of 32. And then this is going to be, the reason that we're not doing this yet is because it kind of opens up a whole can of worms with like, ooh, cross-cancel and simplify and all this stuff, but not really ready for that so draw the picture show the shading and show that there are 12 students okay and we will get here soon enough all right and then Jack number five Jack collected 18 ten dollar bills while selling tickets for a show he gave one sixth of the bills to the theater and kept the, he kept he kept the money what no uh, he kept the rest. Maybe he's going to give them the money tomorrow. How much money did he keep? Okay, so we've got 18 $10 bills. And then we're, they're asking about how much money he kept. So we have to have our 18 in uh, with sixths as our sets. So I have 18 that's made up of six and what? And that's when you say three. So I'm going to do three rows of six. For a total of 18. 3 times 6 is 18. But remember, we have sets. We have six sets, so it's got to be like this. Okay, now one sixth of the bills went to the theater. One group went to the theater. Two theater. Okay, and he kept the rest. I wonder why. Okay, how much money did he keep? Now, this isn't what fraction. It's how much money. So each one of these is worth 10. So how many do we have? If we look at him having five sixths of the bills, okay, if we had 18 to start and we take the three away that go to the theater, that leaves 15 bills left. Okay, but each one bill is worth $10. So if you look at the 15 times 10, how much money did he keep? He kept $150. Okay, so I sure hope this was helpful and uh, come back again on the next video. So we'll see you real soon. Bye for now.